Well, like to wish a good Sunday afternoon to the two people that watch this. I tried to do this on Friday afternoon, but had a bit of a failure because I was not very good with my audio recorder. So I had a lot of video without audio. Well, at least not the audio I was looking for. So today we're going to do this all over again. And we're going to go to the one spot that I'm familiar with. J. Cook State Park. Because, well... There's nice corners there and lots of opportunities to accelerate and decelerate. And hopefully this time we can get some good sounds of the Reinhardt DBX 45. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jason. I currently live in Duluth, Minnesota, although my house is for sale. My wife and family and I are attempting to move to Oro Valley, Arizona. And if any of you three people that watch this are familiar with Dan Dan the Fireman, uh, he's from Tucson, so it might be someday. I'm hoping to be able to meet him, ride with him, maybe even take a training course from him. He, I know he's in a motorcycle safety foundation instructor, so wouldn't mind. Uh, Learning a little bit more, you can always learn more about safety. I am currently riding aboard a, oh, there we go, a 2020 Street Glide Special. It's got the Milwaukee 8 114. And I do have to say, uh, from a riding perspective, uh, I absolutely love this motorcycle. Uh, I, I did put a lot of extras on it and we'll go through those at some point. We'll do a walk around, although that will probably not be today. Um, it's exceptionally windy out today, which is nice. I, I don't really mind the wind that much. Where we're going, it won't be, shouldn't be a huge impact. I wonder how it will impact the volume. So, we are uh, Monday here in Minnesota. They're looking to start peeling back all of the restrictions that have been used to flatten the curve of, curve rather, of COVID-19, the coronavirus. So, Governor Walls has decided to start opening up retail businesses. I guess the retail business businesses all do have some uh, certain restrictions. I, I'm not a business owner. I haven't really paid that much attention to what the restrictions are, but I know there are some coming. So thankfully though, we are gonna see people be able to start their businesses again and get back to work, at least in some sort of capacity as uh, I know times have been kind of tough for a lot of people and I'm sure it would be nice to see them get on their feet and be able to be able to start working again. And then on June 1st, we're going to open up farther. That's when then bars and restaurants and uh, bars, restaurants and whatever else. Oh, gyms and that type of stuff will be able to open. So, looking forward to getting back to the YMCA. Seeing what that's all about. But today, we're going to be riding. Today, we're riding. Nice pooch. <laughs> now, here is interesting. There we got a turkey vulture. And some crows. You don't see those that close in the city. I mean, I've seen them before when I was farming as a young man. You know, that's pretty rare. Interesting. All right, we're not going to stay.
stay behind this traffic because we want to get a good view of things, even though we do need to be in that lane eventually. This is uh, Masaba Drive. My wife and I came down this drive last year. Well, two years ago now, this fall, and uh, it was, I think it was September. I had a 2016 Ultra Limited, and people are honking horns. I don't know what the hell's going on. Uh, I had a 2016 Ultra Limited, and we were heading down these uh, this hill here, and I think it's 3rd Street or 5th Street, one of the cross streets down here. We were in the left lane, and there was road construction on the right and a barrier on my left. Uh, so as I pulled up, I left a lot of room between me and the car in front of me to kind of soak up any potential rear ending that would happen. But I had no exit plan or even path right or left. I was kind of stuck behind that car. And uh, so as I came to a stop and I left probably 10 or 12 feet, uh, another car I noticed in my mirror, this car was coming up pretty fast. And so I kind of soaked up my safety spot to give him room to stop, and he was able to stop, but the car behind him, unfortunately, was not able to stop. And that car rear-ended him, pushed him into me, and pushed me and my motorcycle into the car in front of me with my wife on the back. Um, and we were not all the gear all the time that day. We were actually uh, not very well protected, but thankfully because uh, the car behind me soaked up the majority of the hit. Uh, I didn't really get hit that hard. I wasn't able to hold the bike up. I, I kept it up as long as I could and it dropped down real soft, but it was it was unrideable. Fenders were all busted up. Um, it was about $10,000 worth of damage to the motorcycle. Oh, she's a windy one. You can see Park Point is looking a little, uh, a little wavy down there. Might be even surfing. Anyway, uh, so, you know, actually my wife didn't really ride much after that. She was nervous. It was a rough day. Thankfully, nobody got hurt. I was able to hold the bike up for the most part. I kind of set it down gently at the end. It's just, you know, those things are heavy. These things aren't, aren't always that easy to hold up, regardless how strong you are. And, uh, you know, we, we set her down and... I had to get a tow truck to come get the bike. But, you know, none of us even, my wife and I didn't even have a scratch on us. It was a lot of, we were scared, shaken up, but not really anything to write home about. It was like this guy. I don't know what his deal is. Uh, anyway, this is the intersection right here. I was in the left lane right here on 3rd Street. This right lane that I'm currently in was all tore up, and I coned off. I couldn't get there, so... That's where we got rear-ended. So this is New Duluth, or Gary New Duluth, or whatever they call it. Uh, I don't know anything about it. Don't know why it's here. Don't know why it's named what it is. Maybe it was a bunch of rebels from Duluth. Maybe the rebel leader, his name was Gary. And so he started a town, and I'm going to call it New Duluth. And they loved him so much, they said, we need to name it after you. Let's call it Gary New Duluth and start our own life and we'll have our own buildings and rules and our own street lamps. We don't like the rules of the other dudes and we're going to like Subarus. So this guy sells a lot of, that's all he sells pretty much. So, oh, there's a Honda and a Toyota. But that guy pretty much sells Subarus. He's got them all over on the left side too and more here on the right. The guy is a big fan of the Subarus. I had one, I'll tell you about it sometime. I am not a fan. Uh, it's highly unlikely. But hey, you know what? Gary here in Noodaloof probably wanted to open the trophy bar to show he was a winner, display his trophy about not being from Duluth, being from New Duluth. Got the phone company to establish a central office here so that people could make phone calls to Old Duluth tell him how much better things were in New Duluth. He was even able to get a fire station started. Uh, you know, small enough probably that the department was volunteer, not paid for, but, you know, all the guys that wanted to move to Gary New Duluth, they were hardy men, ready to volunteer to be a, helping their neighbors in a time of 
stress and difficulty and as people got older they needed to open up senior living homes because you know population ages you got to have a place for for us to live as we get older and of course when it all started he wanted to do commerce with Wisconsin I'm sure that the, the town people and city council and businesses said hey how can we do businesses across the river we got to go all the way back to Duluth and cross those bridges and we don't like going back to Duluth that's why we created new Duluth and so I have a feeling that uh, Joe or well, Gary sorry Gary probably got together with a gentleman by the name of Oliver who funny there's this little town over here called Oliver Wisconsin and I bet Gary got together with Oliver and said hey Oliver I got uh, I got some peeps here I'd like to do a little business in Wisconsin without going through you know Duluth and of course Oliver he wouldn't be a fan of Superior so he'd say no I understand I'd like to find a way across too without having to go through Superior and all those uppity high-end folk and so Oliver and Gary probably got together and decided to build a bridge but Gary being newer probably didn't have a whole lot of money Oliver said hey I'll tell you what I'll fund most of it but you gotta name the bridge after me and so we have for your viewing pleasure after this next corner the bridge that Gary and Oliver built called the Oliver Bridge and I almost bumped that right but the Jeep was in front of me and I had to go slower and here she is for your viewing pleasure the oh boy she's windy down here as all get out the Oliver Bridge built by Gary and Oliver and I have to follow a stinking Jeep oh well I had a Jeep I didn't have big tires on it though like that and uh, this is St. Louis River consequently that we're following and nobody behind me thinks but she is windy a couple of geese down there they can't figure out what they're doing so that's my story of how this bridge got built. Oh, lucky for Tim and Don. I wonder if they got means they got married, they got divorced. Of course, they did probably be Tim minus Don. Maybe they got, you know, started dating. Did they get engaged? Who knows? So oh, there's a car. I'm gonna turn it on. We're gonna give them some room because I'd like you. This is my favorite bridge in all of the area. Well, I mean, the one over that will go through Carlton's pretty nice too. Ah. A jeep he stopped uh, I'm gonna wait for a bit oh put her in neutral here if I can find neutral there we go so that's my story this is Oliver Wisconsin that we're currently in and you can tell you're in Wisconsin I could come up with all kinds of reasons here, but what I'm really going to say, and I don't know if you can see that road sign down there, but it says Junction W, Wisconsin, for whatever reason, uh, does not, it does number some roads, but it letters a lot of roads. And so the lettering of roads says, hey, I'm Wisconsin. They do not do that. And Princess Buttercup was here as well. Princess Buttercup. For those of you who are fans of... I love this bridge, it's cool. I have never seen a train on it. I don't even know if it's used for that anymore. I have no idea. I just know it's a pretty neat looking bridge. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is shut her down until we uh, stop to go up the hill where I'm going to change my audio a little bit and see if we can get some good sounds of the pipe. So, talk to you in a bit.
I've been uh, I'm in Carleton, Minnesota. Just got done going through the uh, state park there, Jay Cook. Hopefully we got some good sound out of the microphone. We'll see what the video looks like. But I stopped here at the third base bar and I've always wondered like what are the what's the reasoning behind third base bar? I mean aren't you usually trying to score like home run and you know fill in your analogy there on that however you want. Or is it like saying, hey we recognize everyone has room for improvement so we're not gonna pretend that we're there or that we've arrived. We're gonna say we're most of the way there. We're at third base. We're pretty darn good. But we just don't think anybody's there. So it's either an act in humility or an act in reality. I don't know.